In most marriages and long-term relationships, respect is more crucial than love. Respect can be lost when one partner chooses to define the word on his or her own terms. Like they say, without respect, love erodes. Hello and welcome to Let's Talk. I am Oluja Kemosaku. And the topic for today is love and respect in marriage. Founder of National Relationship Equity Day, Dr. Femi Ogunjimi Jifem is my guest. Stay with us. Hello, sir. Thank you so much for coming. Thanks for having me. Okay. So what is love and respect? And uh, especially in marriage and what place or what role do they play in marriage? Well, thank you for bringing me on and um, really applaud what you are doing and being a blessing to the lives of people out there and helping their marriages and their relationship journey. Love and respect, they go hand in hand, and they are very two phenomena that are important. Uh, the great two elements in relationship that we cannot do without. Love is an action word, and love means that I'm sharing what I'm feeling inside of me to you. And most of the time, it has to be positive, uh, but sometimes people can misconstrue love that love has to be positive all the time. Love means that I have to be happy with you all the time. That doesn't mean that. That doesn't mean that all has to be good. All has to be awesome in your relationship when it comes to love. You can be going through some difficult times with your partner or in the relationship as a whole, maybe with your children or with your finances, and you still have love for your partner through those storms. So love does not envy, as Bible says, love is patient, love is long-suffering, uh, love is kind. So when we are speaking about true love it's, uh, itself, uh, which has no condition, it's an unconditional love, then that means there should be no situation that can derail your love. There should be any. There should be nothing that is more more powerful than love, or that can derail what you feel for one another. So that's that's pretty much love in its own entity, in its own world. And when we when it comes to respect, we have to see respect as an element that we have to share with one another. It's not one-sided. As I respect you, I'm also expecting you to respect me as well. Respect my boundaries, respect how you speak to me, how we handle conflict, how we talk to one another. So that's respect on its own. But Bible, sometimes people say, oh, respect is, is only one way, that men expect respect or men command respect. And women, whereas they, 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 they yearn for love, the well, Bible talks about we must respect one another. So yeah. we all need respect. We all need respect and we all need love as well. All right. So how does respect operate in marriage? And when do couples start losing respect for one another? Respect must be established from the onset of your relationship. It must be one of your foundations that you have in that relationship and respect comes into play in how you, re you interact with each other. Respect comes into play with your mindset towards one another, how you guys handle conflict, how you guys handle finances, how you handle dealing with your children, how you handle every plans that relates to both of you. So we must be able to have respect in all those circumstances in our relationship, in the, in the unit. Otherwise, we'll be respecting one another. And when you do that, the other person may interpret that as lack of love hmm. to some extent. 
Okay. So, but um, basically, the handwriting should have been written on the wall, um, the wall, because losing respect for someone didn't, don't just start in a day. It's a matter of process. So, what can a partner do to basically upset the other person to get to this point? Uh, how do people lose respect over time? It, it varies. I uh, like, can just share a couple of instances. Maybe for an example, infidelity. Infidelity, uh, if one partner commits an adultery, that can allow the other person to lose respect from, you know, with the perpetrator. Maybe you don't handle the, the family's finances very well. You mismanage the, uh, your finances, the money that belongs to both of you. You probably just spend it on clothes or you're spending on uh, things that you guys did not agree together to spend that money on. That can cause disrespect in the marriage. So those two instances are very common in, in marriages or in relationships that uh, brings about disrespect. And not also meeting your own end of the bargain or perhaps not um, doing what the other person is expecting you to do. Maybe the other person expects that I want to, you know, I want an educated wife or I want an educated man and this man or this woman is not that. That can also bring disrespect. And then you can always see that in the way the person interact with you, or especially when you guys are having a conversation on a particular subject and your response or your contributions sounds like, okay, this person lacks wisdom and knowledge and understanding in this area. But this should have been um, discovered during courtship or while they are still dating. They should have been able to, the guy or the lady should have been able to know if she or she will be able to respect this person if we marry one another, because these things were there. Like they used to say, you, have, you are supposed to have seen the red lights. So why would you proceed into a marriage whereby you know you cannot give respect or you, your love for this person could diminish at any point in time? Let me speak to that in two different ways. Uh, there are, oftentimes you will see the signs or the writing on the wall that will indicate to you that this person uh, lacks respect or this person is not worthy of your respect and people still pursue that relationship uh, for one reason maybe giving the other person the benefit of doubt that they're probably going to change or their situation is going to become better and this person is going to respect me in the future and another reason is maybe social pressure my friends are getting married. My parents are pressuring me to get married. Let me just overlook this. Let me just get married right now. Uh, it's been taking me so long to find somebody who, 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 who has asked for my hand in marriage. So, And this is the person that is willing to go down the aisle with me. Let me just get into the relationship. So you see those two reasons playing out a uh, majority of time that they've seen the, in the indication, the sign on the wall, but yet they still pursue that for those two reasons or uh, beyond that. But the other part is that you may not see the sign on the wall. So for an example, maybe you and the partner, you are both financially set, you are both educated, uh, you're, you both got jobs, and money is there, everybody is doing well. And three years down the road, four years down the road, one of you just wanted to pivot and say, okay, I want to do something different. Maybe I want to have my own business. And then the person pivot from a career that has been going smoothly. And now because they are doing business, the money is not coming the way it used to come. Now that can bring about a disrespect because you've, you've based your relationship or you've seen the relationship from the onset as good. You never saw that there would be a financial problem. You never addressed that from onset because there was nothing to address because everything was good. But then later on, maybe the person even lost his or her job and the person is out of a job for two, three months. So they cannot meet up anymore and they expect you to kind of step up and you are expecting them to, you know, like I can continue doing this. I expect you to just, you know, 
find the money somehow. So that can always bring disrespect as well for the reason why you may not have seen that sign before you got married. Mm. Okay. Now, what do you say to marrying your kind? You know, there's this thing about you, the rich goes with the rich and let the poor be with the poor. Take, for instance, let's use a celebrity as an example, or basically the, the, the MD of an office to a gate man. The MD is a lady and the gate man is a guy. Yeah. And the lady decided to go because she fell in love with that man. Maybe she saw the qualities she wants in a man and she decided to go with him, trying to upgrade him and all. And at the end of the day, the same guy that she was expecting to get something with stabbed her in the back and still said, you insulted her that you with your level, you came down to my levels. So you did not even respect yourself. And to me, I was like, but this is humility. So in, in other words, don't you think that what they usually say that the rich goes with the rich and the poor goes with the poor, don't you think is right in this instance? There are so many instances that can happen and can make us to think that it's better for the rich to go with the rich and not the other way around. And you can also see some instances where the rich will go with the rich and they will still have challenges. Yeah. So we cannot conclude and categorically say that it's better for the rich to go with the rich and not the rich meeting with the poor or the poor mixing with the rich. It's just unfortunate situation that mm -hmm. of what you described that you know the gate man, for an example, um, happened to be someone who was um, maybe you want to call it, um, I don't want to say ungrateful in a sense, because we cannot use money to say you will not be ungrateful. Uh, but for lack of better word, you know, you may say, well, you know, how, how, why don't you think that you are even worthy to be loved in the first place mm -hmm. with somebody who is, you know, richer than you? Why don't you think that you're on the same level? Mm -hmm. I mean, don't allow finances to dictate what level, you know, you belong. Exactly. It's all up here in your head and your values mm -hmm. and, and, and your ethics and your morals and your standards. Those are the things that should determine our worth, mm -hmm. our self-confidence, not the financial part, because money comes and go. Exactly. The person that made millions yesterday may not make millions tomorrow. I mean, I'm not wishing anything bad on them, but... They're not going to be making the same amount of money. You know, knock on wood, nothing bad happens. But you know, as a matter of fact, even if you keep making money, you don't want to keep making the same amount of money. You want to make more. So mm -hmm. things change. So if you're going to progress, of course, I would expect a gate man to also progress in his life as well. So if we are all on that progressive mindset and we see that what really determines our our uh, self-confidence, our value is not really money. It's based on our value system. It's based on our standard. It's based on our identity. Those are the things that we need to really zoom in and focus on for even folks that are trying to get married or that are already married right now. You know, there was something that I shared, I think, a, a day ago, or two days ago on social media when it comes to money, because I was asking a friend of mine who has been married for 20 years, and I asked him, tell me the secret sauce of what is keeping your relationship together. And he mentioned so many things like um, them able to, you know, work on their love, always trying to, you know, keep it spicy and rekindle their, their love and respect. But the last thing he mentioned was that we don't allow the presence or the absence of money to dictate our happiness for each other or how we love each other. And to me, that inspired that money shouldn't be the foundation of how you command respect or how you earn respect from your partner. It's the principle behind it that should determine your, your state of mind. Because take for an example, if you look at the principle of how you make money together, the unity, the agreements that you both have, that you, you, you both practice during that journey. Either you make the money 
or you don't make the money, you will still feel happy about each other. But if there is a disagreement in how you're going to make money, maybe you say we should spend this money this way and your partner does not agree and you went ahead and spent that money and then the result of it is not acceptable, guess what? Your partner will be so mad at you and you will hear the word, didn't I tell you? Hmm. And when that happens, there is unhappiness. Okay. That begins to happen in the relationship. So how can a couple maintain love and respect in marriage and how can it be expressed? If you want to maintain love and respect in the relationship, first look at the basis of it, the foundation of it, the principles that you should be practicing in the relationship. There's something called relationship equity, and it's based off what I just, um, what, what you, you know, introduced me as, as a founder of National Relationship Equity Day, which is celebrated every June 24th, to basically empower couples to practice what is called relationship equity. And relationship equity says that we should have fairness in relationship. We should be able to respect each other the way or treat each other the way we love to be treated. So that means if I have that practice, if I have that principle as my foundation in relationship, that I'm practicing fairness, I'm, I'm treating you the way I would like to be treated, regardless of what situation and state I am in, then anything else that builds on it, love and respect, will, will be reciprocal. It, 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 it will not be one-sided. Because I'm treating you the way I would like to be treated. So even if I'm not at your level financial-wise, you will still treat me the way you would like to be treated if you were in my shoes. Okay. Is that making sense? Yes. So we need that practice of relationship equity. You know, and how you determine roles, gender roles in a relationship is not based on your gender. It's not based on, I'm a man. I'm the one that's supposed to be controlling the money. Oh, you are a woman. You're supposed to be the one doing the house chores. You are supposed to be the one taking care of the kids, cooking for me all the time. You cannot determine roles based on gender. That is not relationship equity. That's not a balanced equality in the relationship. You are already seeing that you guys are not together. You guys don't have equal share of power. All right. Thank you so much for that. Now, finally, for couples who have lost um, love and respect in their marriage, how do you think they can rebuild it? How can you rebuild love and respect in your yes. marriage? Mm -hmm. You got to go back to the genesis of your relationship, how it started. And for majority of relationships, it started great. What were the things that you were doing to build that love, to deepen that love, to convey to the other person that you truly love them? See, love, you can feel it, but it has to be backed by action. So what were the things that you did that conveyed, that indicated that what you were feeling on the inside is actually true love? So maybe you guys used to spend a lot of time together. You used to travel. You used to go to the restaurant. Maybe you used to shower each other with gifts, you know, buy each other, you know, birthday gifts, you celebrate all those milestones, you never miss them. If those were the things that you did uh, at the beginning of your relationship, maybe you used to help each other out in the house. You know, there was no gender role when it comes to chores. Everybody was just playing a part in it. You had that teamwork. If those were the things that you did to convey your love, and now those things are missing and your partner is feeling like she or he doesn't love you anymore or you feel like your partner doesn't love you anymore, those are the things that are, are, are sitting at the foundation of it. Those are the reasons why they are saying that the love has deple uh, depleted or the love has diminished. And how you do that to bring that back is to go back to the things that you used to do that, that solidified that love from the beginning of the relationship. Once you go back to that, start doing those things. It becomes a love deposit. And when you deposit so much love into that relationship, it's easier for you to withdraw that love anytime you want to withdraw it. Mm. So how you get things back is to go back to the way things used to be before the fall. Before the fall. So it asks for you to uh, think 
in retrospect, what has happened? How did we balance our relationship? How did we love each other? How did we show that? Maybe holding hands together, maybe regular intimacy. Maybe that's the way, you know, it shows that you love that person. There's something called five love languages because the way I want to feel loved might be different from the way my partner wants to feel loved. Maybe quality time, words of affirmation, gifting. Those are the things that may convey to your partner that they are loved. And if those are the things that you were doing before, then go back to them. And if, 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 if you're not doing those things, maybe you should have a, if, if have a conversation with your partner and say, what will make you feel loved? Mm. You know, talk about those five love languages. It's very common in most relationships. People want to feel loved based on those five things. Thank you so much, Dr. Femi. It's been wonderful having you on the show. Thank you once again. And to you out there, I'm just going to leave you with the words of uh, Dr. Femi. He says, go back to the way things used to be before the fall. That's actually got to me before the fall and uh, get back your relationship and just keep sailing through. Until next time, I remain Olu Jokemusaku. Bye.